Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanae Kidd, and I serve as the president of Charles County Association of Student Council. I will be your moderator for tonight's town hall. Thank you so much for joining us today to hear our 11 candidates for student member of the Board of Education. The student member of the Board of Education has a vote alongside seven other adult members on the decisions that affect you the most. The board votes on school calendar, curriculum, and service as the leaders of our school system. The student member is unique because they are the only members elected by students. We have 11 amazing candidates here tonight for the student member of the Board of Education this year. We have six candidates from North Point High School, seven candidates from St. Charles High School, one candidate from the Plata High School, and finally, one candidate from Westlake High School. We have six rising seniors and five rising juniors. And now, the moment you all have been waiting for, candidates, please take 30 seconds to tell us your name, grade, school, and why you decided to run for the student member of the board. So Amoya Akula, would you like to go first? Hi, my name is Amoya Kula. I am in 11th grade. I go to North Point High School. And the reason I chose to run for student member of the board is because I really want to bring students together to share a common goal and try to be a representative voice for 15,000 Charles County students. Thank you, Akula. Now to Amira Abujama. Hello everyone, my name is Amira Bujama. I'm currently a junior and I'm in the engineering program at North Point High School. The reason why I'm running to be student member of the board is because I genuinely believe all students have a voice that needs to be heard and I want to be that outlet for students to express their voices and opinions. Thank you. Now to Danae Hudson. Hello everyone, my name is Danae Hudson. I'm an 11th grader at North Point High School. And the main reason that I decided to run for student member of the board was because I feel like a lot of students in Charles County Public Schools have a lot of concerns and issues, but they're not probably confident enough to speak up about it. And I feel like I can be that voice to speak up and make change happen. Thank you. Now on to David Young. Hello everybody, my name is David Young. I'm currently a sophomore attending Westlake High School. And the reason I wanted to run for this position is because I believe that there are many things that people are concerned about, many issues that students have and can't express. And I feel like I can be a good voice and a good representative for them. Thank you. On to Elizabeth Holmes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth. Holmes. I am currently a 10th grader at St. Charles High School. The reason why I wanted to run for this position is to work with the MTSS slash RIT program to make sure students are on the right track towards their education. Thank you. Now, Gabrielle Wimbush. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Wimbush. I am a sophomore from St. Charles High School. And I am running for student member of the board because I feel the students of Charles County Public Schools need someone who will be sure to give them a voice. And I feel like I'm the person for the job. Amazing. And to Jordan Davis. Hi, everyone. My name is Jordan Davis. I'm a current junior at North Point High School. And I run Born's Run for Small in order to facilitate a safe and equal education system and community for underrepresented groups in our um, school system. Thank you. On to Kyla Jones. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kyla Jones. I'm a current 11th grader at La Plata High School. And the reason I want to be um, a SMOB is because I want to be a liaison for my peers as well as to be the to be the go person for my superiors and to make a difference within my community and our education as well. Thank you. On to Michelle Reeves. Hello, I'm Michelle Johnson Reeves. I'm a 10th grader at St. Charles High School and I'm running for SHMOB because even though I know that I probably won't see all the changes that I implement on our schools and our county, 
you know, by the time I graduate, so I'm graduating in two years, I'll be proud and happy to see that my younger siblings, all four of them, and thousands more across the county, to be able to experience a healthy work environment and like in a productive school year. Thank you. Shriya Chada. Hello, I'm Shreya Chada. I'm a 10th grader at North Point High School, and I'm running for student member of the board because I want to be able to shine light on issues in Charles County Public Schools from a student's perspective, specifically accessibility issues. Thank you. Vernon Stover. Hi, guys. My name is Vernon Stover. I'm the current junior North Point High School SJ secretary. I'm a class of 23 representative and an academic eagle. I spent my last six years in NCCPS lecturing, tutoring, advocating, and leading. I believe in educational equity and making our learning environments as enjoyable and innovative as possible for students and faculty. I truly believe various issues of focus and rigorous solutions are the best and most ambitious to move our expansive and diverse county forward. Thank you all candidates. We have some very impressive group of students leading here today. This is a reminder for all the students watching that after this, concluding today's primary, all sixth through 12th grader students We'll be able to send, we'll be sent a link to vote via Synergy email. But it will open on March 28th and close at 11.59 on April 1st. Every sixth grader through 12th grader students will be able to vote and cast one vote for one of the 11 candidates running. Following the primary elections, the top two candidates from this election move on to the General Assembly, which will take place in May. Following the general elections in May, 28 student member of the Board of Education will be elected. Tonight's town hall will consist of questions collected from students all over Charles County. We had over 200 questions. These questions were all based on uh, quality and popularity by the committee of students. Candidates have not had any opportunity to read the questions before. And they will be responding to the student questions in real time. I will read the questions and then give each candidate 60 seconds to respond. Our motion candidates when they have 10 seconds left. To be fair to all candidates, we really encourage you to not exceed the 60 time limit when you're responding. Candidates will be asked questions and then in various order alphabetically to be fair, the next person will go first. So it'll be fair for all candidates. So to start off, we will start with Moya. You will be given the first question. So, the way the rules are written and how the, how the administration enforce these rules, many students feel that the dress code is unfair. How would you address this issue as a student, a student member of the Board of Education? So, I would first want to look at the dress code itself and evaluate. And then I would also want to seek out students' inputs and see exactly where the problem lies. And out of all the collective responses, I will come up with a response to try and mitigate that issue. Thank you. Um, Amir, you are next. Okay, so the dress code is an issue and I know a lot of people have a problem with it. So for one thing, a lot of things when it comes to the dress code, they deem comfortable clothing as immodest. For example, leggings or jeans with holes above the knee, all of that kind of stuff. So for me, what I would do is I would go through the dress code because the dress code was written and it has policies that were written a long time ago from when like it's outdated now. So I believe that our dress code needs to be modernized and we could do that through just seeing and deciding what is, you know, um, outdated and then uh, modernizing it from there. Amazing. Now, Danae. So, again, I know that a lot of um, students have issues with the dress code. Specific genders have different issues with the dress code. And I feel like getting students input on exact issues that they have, whether it's the type of clothing that we wear, what we can wear, I feel like that's a really good step to take. And then looking at the dress code itself to see if those rules are, rules are already implemented or not then we can build from there. Thank you for your response, the David. The dress code has been a serious issue within especially my school of Westlake and fashion is a big thing. And I feel as if people use clothing, especially nowadays as a way to express themselves. And many students are uncomfortable and do not seem 
very pleased with the dress code. So what I would try to do is I would try to receive feedback from faculty and students and see if we can find a kind of meet a, a middle ground and see where both is acceptable within an educational standpoint. Thank you. Elizabeth? So a lot of the kids in my high school um, are very, they're against the dress code. Um, some of them um, wear different kinds of clothes and I know the dress code is outdated. So what I need to do um, is um, ask for feedback um, and also um, to um, get people's opinions on what to wear and what not to wear and also refer back to the dress code to see what is right and what is wrong to what is right and what is wrong to, to wear. And that's uh, my reason for it. Great, Gabrielle? I would first address the issue by looking at what the students dislike and like about the dress code. Like for example, the, the shirts with the, the two finger rule for the, for the shirts sleeves. I noticed that a lot of students don't like that. So first I would address what the students don't like and like about the dress code and think is acceptable with it. And then I, and then I would go to the board and negotiate what needs to be changed and what we can change about it to make sure that all parties can come to an agreement. Great. On to Jordan. With the dress code, a lot of minority students, especially um, our BIPOC population, as well as our female gender students, as well as gender identifying students, have also been dis discriminated against the dress code and its enforcement and policies. So I would definitely first impact student voices and opinions on what they believe should be fixed and implemented in our dress code, and then work together with our students, faculty, and other board members in order to facilitate and create a new dress code that will be equal and applied all to all students. Thank you. To Kyla? It is a very big problem at my school, especially at La Plata. You know, um, fashion is a way to express yourself and it is a way to just, um, it's the first thing that you see when you see in a person. And when you are limited to what you can wear, you know, that also goes into a lot of students and not having enough money to buy new clothes that go with the dress code. So what I would really do to resolve this problem was I would go to, to the source, which is the student. Then I would look over the dress code as well to see what needs to be more of our, our generation as rules as well as you know coming to an agreement with the teachers as well as well as the staff to come to an agreement thank you to um, michelle i would ask the student population of what they think about it currently what they want to see change um you know why and why because the why is a big part of why they hate like why do they dislike a certain thing over another because i do understand that the dress code does target more different people with different body types especially with like crop tops or tank tops or whatever because it, it can become more revealing depending on you know what your body is and your body type is so and then i would try to minimize or change the penalizations or you know to when how administrators enforce the dress code instead of pulling people out of class and letting them making them go home, disrupting their work. And because that just, you know, gives them more homework at the end of the day. It, you know, probably causes more stress on the student and that's not the goal. Thank you. To Tria. Um, I personally think that the point of implementing the dress code is to make the learning environment distraction free. So I would discuss with my fellow peers and students as to what they think is a distraction within the dress code. And using that, I would implement a better dress code that would help make the learning environment a better place. Thank you. And Vernon. I would first evaluate the current county guidelines for dress codes and make a comprehensive step-by-step -step plan to address that. The first step would obviously be to address was in the guidelines. Second would be to hear from student voices all across the county. Third would be to hear from administrators and principals on their 
perspective on it and for me to take those ideas and those policy initiatives to the board itself. Thank you all for your amazing responses to this question. On to the next one, Vernon, you will be getting this question. So, school lunches given to students are used for energy and to finish off the day strong. Returning back to in-person school from the pandemic, DCSB has been able to give all students free lunches. However, many students feel that the lunches aren't large enough to fill students or appetizing enough to get them into the lunch line. How would you address this issue as a student member of the board? So I know that people have been talking about the lunches oh, and- Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry. So we're actually gonna be going in order that everyone goes first. So Vernon will be taking the first question. Thank you. I apologize. Vernon, no, no problem. Um, Vernon, you'll be taking the first question. Hey, great. So be school... this question. Okay, so I go? Yes. Hey, great. So for school lunches, I would first take a look at the county budget. I believe it's around 300 million currently. And I would start looking at the per unit cost of every student meal and see if we need to increase that um, or look at different suppliers and different farmers and things like that. Thank you, Vernon. Now we're gonna to go to Sharia. Um, I'm sorry, you cut out when you were saying the question for me. Can you repeat it? Oh, no problem. So with students returning back to in-person school, CCSC has been able to give all students free lunches. However, some students don't feel as if the school meals are large enough to fill their appetite or appetizing enough to get them into the lunch line. How would you, as a student member of a board of the board, address this issue? Um, so I first, if students are still struggling to pay for their lunch, the farms program is still there. And I would increase how much food I how like is given during the school lunch. And I would also add more nutritious options and maybe have a vote with the student body as to what they would want added into the school lunch. Thank you. On to Michelle. I would talk to the cafeteria ladies and anyone in the cafeteria workers about, you know, how long it takes to prepare meals, how much it takes to, you know, make that meal options for every week. And also, um, Addition to that, I would also add more inclusive meal options for people with different diets, like vegetarians, vegans, pescatarians, you know, people that can't drink milk, that milk is a very, it's like one of the most popular drinks offered for students throughout, throughout every school in Charles County and probably throughout the whole nation. So I would try to offer more um, options so people all have a chance to eat and not get left out. And then I will bring it to the board to implement that and change. Thank you. On to Kyla. Okay. Um. So the first thing that I would really do was I would um go to students, see um beforehand, like take a vote as to what they want as portion sizes, so that they feel full. You know, some kids they come to school already hungry and they don't really have the option to eat like before they come. So I would ask them what they would wanna see on the menu, give them a menu option on what there's gonna be, as well as cater to all of their food needs. Amazing, on to Jordan. Well, initially I would like to speak with our, working inside out with our cafeteria system, with our lunch ladies, with those who work in there, see, what issues need to be fixed on their end, as well as involve student voices of what they'd like to see change to our lunch um, offerings. We do have a farm raised week, one week out every school year where we have homegrown foods from local sources that we offer in Charles County. I'd like to expand that into our lunch program, um, maybe once a month, twice a month, more often, so we have more nutritious food that's frequented to our students and provided. Thank you. On to Gabrielle. As far as school lunches, I would like to see I would like to see more time for lunch for students to actually be able to finish their lunch instead of the normal 30 minutes provided, because that is also included. The, the time to get your food in the lunch line is also included in that 30 minutes. So students might not have enough time to eat. Secondly, I would survey students for a lot more cho to see their choices for what they want on the school lunch menu and also see it be made more available to students with special diets, such as 
such as vegetarians and vegans and such. And lastly, I would like to see that occasionally seconds might be available to students who might need that little bit more of food, especially if they can't get the food at home. Thank you. On to Elizabeth. I would like to see change in our in our um, school lunches because some of the lunches are not healthy enough to sustain the students throughout the day. Because when I go to the cafeteria, all they serve is fast food and all these junky stuff. So what I would really love to see is more healthy foods like salads and um, you know, all those things like with the with the nutritious um, foods inside them. I would like to see more of that. And secondly, um, we need more time in the cafeteria to eat because we have 30 minutes um, to eat and the lunch line lunch lines are long. So what we really what I really need to do um, is, you know, talk to more students and see if you know, we need to add more food items to the menu and also if we need more time to eat because we need all students to be healthy and, remaining. and that's the only way um, our students will go throughout the day without being hungry. Thank you. And to David. I believe that everything is connected to student interaction and communication. So first, I would like to speak to each student and, you know, get their idea and understanding of how, what they're displeased with and pleased with with the lunch. And then I would go into the cafeteria system and figure out the budget, see and provide the options that we can uh, through student interaction and provide from there. Thank you. To Danae. Um, so I feel like getting student input is something that will be very beneficial because not all students eat the same thing, whether it's pizza or a cheeseburger or the chicken sandwiches that we usually get served all the time. So I feel like trying to come together and see what everyone would like for the different days is a really good option. And then incorporating our lunch system um, just to see if they need more help in the lunchroom because if they're understaffed or they just can't accommodate for the number of students that are in the school. Thank you. Amira? Okay, so for me, the reason why I feel like students aren't feeling full or satisfied when it comes to school lunch food is because it lacks a nutritional value. I know we like to throw a lot of the food on whole wheat buns and call it healthy, but unfortunately, it's not. So I feel like just getting more fruits, more vegetables, more fresh sources for them to eat. Um, on top of that, I think, well, actually, that's it. Yeah, just more food. And I think that the meat could be, you know, real. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Amoya. So first, I would want to interview with students, have a survey, see what problems they have specifically with the food, and then I would tie that into communicating with the cafeteria ladies themselves. Since they're the ones preparing it, they would have more deeper insight, so a different point of view. And then I would lastly look at the school's budget and see what we can do to give healthier lunches and not go over budget, since I know there are also other factors involved, so I want to make sure it's all accommodated into. Thank you all for your amazing responses once again. Great job. We're gonna move on to the next question. And Amira, you'll be beginning our next question. It is, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Okay, so for me, I'd say my main strengths is that I'm very persistent and hardworking. So I put my full effort into everything I do and I like to pay very close attention to detail. And then I'd say for my weaknesses, say lately were you able to hear those responses can someone let me know in the chat okay I'm so sorry, Mira, but you actually got cut out right before you began your weaknesses. Do you mind restating that response for me? Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so for my weakness, I feel like I lack confidence. So a lot of times I'm not able to properly express what I want to say because I'm afraid people won't want to hear what I want to say. But lately I've been working on it. I've been able to put myself out there and really try to help other people gain confidence as well. 
Thank you, Amira. On to the next. Um, so as for my strengths, I feel like I'm a very creative person when it comes to trying to put together different activities that can revolve around a common goal that I have myself or with friends that I have or family. So I feel like that will tie into with becoming a student member because you have to create solutions to any concerns or goals that may be out there. And I feel like as weaknesses, um, I guess putting myself out there as well, I'm more of a reserved person and I like to keep to myself. So I feel like putting myself out there at the right times and not holding back as much. Thank you. On to David. I think my strengths include looking for the best in the worst situations. I actually traveled to South American countries to teach kids their English. And in those very unlikely situations where teaching and resources are limited, we're able to find the best in it. So nothing is impossible. I'm, I'm ready to fight and I won't give up. And I think my, my weakness is, is time management. Sometimes I'm trying to juggle too many things, but that's only because of my eager and ambition. Thank you. On to Elizabeth. So my strengths are learning quickly from my teachers and being prepared to do all my works and projects and not to procrastinate to do my priorities and also helping people to do their best for their success. And for weaknesses, I don't really have a weakness at this right right now. Thank you. On to Gabrielle. My strengths are that I'm a very committed person, I'm hardworking, and I'm very creative with solutions whenever a problem occurs. My weaknesses are that I'm a perfectionist and want the best and want everything to be the best that it possibly can, even to the point where I might push a little too hard for it to be perfect. And I'm a bit reserved, but I am working on that a lot more now. Thank you. On to Jordan. Um, a few of my strengths are that I am a very ambitious and determined person. I see what I want. I'm a go-getter, and I do whatever is um, what's best in order to achieve my goal to make a better community. I'm also hardworking, and I'm very organized. I can make sure everything has its purpose and is being done correctly. Um, my one weakness, and I have a few others, is that I'm a perfectionist. I strive to achieve the best, and when I keep pushing in order to achieve that, um, I'm learning now that sometimes perfection isn't key. It's just what's best for the students and what's best for the community in the whole. Thank you. On to Kyla. Um, I would say three of my strengths are that, one, I'm very determined. Number two, um, I'm very organized. And number three it would be, um, I don't know when to quit. You know, when I can't seem to get um, a resolution, like when the front door is shut, I go through the, through the back and I, I find a way to come to an agreement with a lot of things. And some of my weaknesses are, I, I am a little self-reserved, um, you know, being, um, isolated for more like a year and a half now, my extrovertedness has gone down, but I am working, um, on that as a person as well. Thank you. On to Michelle. My apologies, Michelle. That's fine. Um, some of my strengths are being very ambitious and being very creative and making new solutions based off of things I've done, people I've talked to and experienced while networking and just having friends in the community. From mock trial, tennis, SGA, engineering, program when I created my and published the magazine a couple years ago I've had to you know learn from all these experiences and that's helped me grow and really you know get to talk to people and some of my weaknesses is social media I'm not really with the trends as much as I was before when I was doing you know the fashion trends and fashion magazine so you know but with this selection I am building those skills back up and being more relevant in the things that are going on, going on around me. Thank you so much. On to Shreya. Um, I would say that one of my biggest strengths is that I'm generally prepared for whatever I have to do. And um, 
when I do my work, I'm efficient and thorough with it. And I usually can find the root of the problem and address it. But one of my biggest weaknesses is that I have trouble letting go of something that I've started because if I put a lot of time and effort into something, I don't, I just don't want to let it go like that. Thank you. On to Vernon. Some of my strengths include integrity. Um, I vision plan for the future. I always have a plan set out. Um, connectivity with students. I've been able to connect with so many freshmen and underclassmen, juniors and seniors throughout the entire process of this. Uh, my biggest weakness is, while well, I'm not a perfectionist, I do strive for excellence, so I do micromanage a lot. I am. My hands are usually in everything, and I usually try to make everything as best as it can be. Thank you. And Amoya. So some of my strengths are I'm a very social person. I do enjoy talking to people, and I like building relationships with, relationships with people, and it's just fun to get to know people. And a weakness I have is I tend to second guess myself sometimes, and that could be a detriment to me since, you know, I would pull myself back, but I'm learning with the selection process that I should put myself out there. And if I believe my idea is worth it, I will put it out there to the best of my ability. Thank you all for your responses. Once again, more than amazing. Now we're gonna be moving on to the next question. And Shreya, you'll be taking this um, question first. It is, how will you, help the Board of Education see the perspective of the student. Um, as a potential student member of the board, my job would be to express what the student's concerns are. So one way I would achieve that is by potentially having polls or even just discussing it directly with my peers and students as to what are the main concerns that they want to be addressed. Thank you. And so, Michelle. I would open up all forms of connection and communication, like on social media, my phone number, my email address. I have that on my social media. Um, I'm putting it on there actively as of these days. Um, and also by visiting other schools and getting to talk to people during their lunch periods or if I see them in the halls as I'm passing, I would try to, you know, get to know their opinions, their thoughts, things they want to see change, any issues, problems, concerns, and really get to know the people around me because they are, rep I'm representing all, everybody of Charles County, all students. Thank you. To Kyla. One thing I would do um, to, to like help see the Board of Education, um, the Board of Education to see the perspective of a student is really to just put them in the shoes of the student. I would take one of them from the board and just, um, Basically, let them examine how students are, um, come to an agreement with things, and to basically modernize. Thank you. To Jordan? Um, I believe one of the biggest things in getting able to get student voices out is school visits. Having monthly school visits to each school will also keep the SMOB updated on issues that are current and detrimental to our students as well as using our school liaisons, being more interactive with them from each middle and high school, contacting them to see what are big issues in their schools, while also connecting with our students on social media. That's one of the biggest platforms we have to reach over the over 27,000 students in our county or to see in real time what issues are um, present to them and get that presented to the board. Thank you. To Gabrielle. I'll ask the students their concerns about what's going on in their schools and in the county as far as all of the public, and as far as all of CCPS. And then on the flip side of that, as the representative, I'll be getting to know students' opinions on things that are happening in the board, on the board side as well, so that all communication is open and everyone has a chance to voice their opinion. Thank you. To Elizabeth. Um, I will have the Board of Education see a perspective of a student. It, I will ask the student their concerns or what they're going through in the school system before I um, tell the Board of Education their situations. And I believe that we should have a platform like social media, like Zoom, something like that, so that the student can voice their concerns and their situations and the Board of Education will find a way to help them. 
Thank you. To David. I will help the Board of Education see the perspective of a student by just being a student. You know, as, as all these candidates here, we are all students. We live the experience. We go to school every day. We have the same struggles. And so many students have a voice that deserve to be heard. Maybe that can't be heard by administration. Maybe they're afraid to speak up, but we can be their friend. We can be a family member to them. We can listen to their concerns and then bring it because of this privileged position, we can speak to the Board of Education. We can let them know how students feel. Thank you. For Danae? Danae, can you hear us? Okay. So we'll come back to Danae after the next speaker, and if not, we'll get in contact with her. So Amir, you may go. So for me, I would like to allow students to have direct representation when it comes to expressing their own perspective. So what I would do, what I, I would establish just bi-weekly or monthly synergy emails that we can send out to students that inform them about issues that we're currently facing and then allow them to fill out possibly a form that's attached to it where they can express their opinions and ideas. And of course, I would read over them and I would take the majority of ideas expressed and then relay that to the board. Thank you. Amoya? So obviously we are all students here and um, to get the Board of Education to see our perspective, I would first try to speak to them. However, if they cannot rationalize or see it quite yet. I would, I was doing like a suggestion box thing at all schools where students can put in any issues they're facing and I could take them and review all of the different um, issues that students believe we are facing. And I will address that to the board and even giving board members a monthly visit to the school to actually witness real time what students are doing and even get given the opportunity for students to talk to them directly so they can have a more direct interaction or if they're too shy, I will represent for them and talk to board members. My apologies. Thank you, and Vernon. Yes, I would work to fully open up the lines of communication with students and the board. Uh, students have a unique connection and all share similar experiences inside their buildings. I would work to engage students back with their community and their schools and definitely encourage them to bring their concerns to the Board of Education, face to face with the people that implement and enforce those policies. Thank you. So just a quick update, Nay, that we got kicked out of the meeting. So we're going to either come back to her towards the end of the meeting or when she hops in, we're gonna make up all the questions. So for now, we're gonna continue our town hall. Once again, you guys did great with the questions. Keep it up, guys, you're doing amazing. The next question will begin with one moment, please. David. So the next question for you will be a student wishes to voice a concern to the Board of Education themselves. What would you my apologies. So a student wishes to voice their opinions and their concerns, the Board of Education themselves. What would be your reaction to this type of question and how would you respond to it? If a student was that passionate and that eager to bring a concern they had to the Board of Education, I would definitely encourage it. I would encourage it and give them the correct information on how to do so, so they don't go in so blindly and incorrectly and informally. I would help them to the best of my knowledge. And if they feel fearful or they lack the, the knowledge to do so, then I would 100% be on board to help them. Thank you. To Kyla. So what I basically do for them is I would let them come and sit with me. I would let them um, come and see how um, problems are resolved. And I would just let them see the process of how it all is and to just help them to the best of my abilities to get their um, problem heard through me. Amazing. So it seems that like Danae is back in the chat. Danae, can you unmute just to confirm? Hello. 
All right, so we're going to take a pause on this question, and we're going to let Danae have an equal opportunity to answer the question that she missed. So for now, we're going to turn to question four. Um, Danae, this is for you. How would you help the Board of Education suit the perspective of the student? Um, one way that I would help the Board of Education see the perspective of a student is to kind of give them a day by day of what students currently now go through so that they, because I'm a student myself, but also getting student input because every student's life is different from going to school to extracurricular activities. So I guess just trying to make sure that we understand what everyone's going through so that we can reach a common goal and a solution within each school. Thank you. All right, so now we're gonna to return to the question that we were discussing before you, back, before you got back in the call. Now I'm gonna repeat the question just to make sure everyone knows exactly what we're talking about now. So, as a student, as a student member of the board, students will come up to you um, telling them their wishes to speak and voice their concerns with the Board of Education themselves. How would you react and what, your, what would your response be to that? Today, did you get the question? Um, could you repeat it? You cut out. No problem. My apologies, guys. So, a student wishes to voice their concern to the Board of Education themselves. What would be your reaction and what would be your response to it? So, the next person will be answering this question. would be Elizabeth. If a student um, brings out their concerns and their situations, I would encourage them because, you know, they're a student just like me, and I might have went through the same thing that they're going through. So for me to reach out to that student, I'll sit one-on-one -on -one with that student and also give them encouraging words as they go throughout their education, as they go throughout their school and their careers, so that they don't feel alone because, you know, um, all of us have gone through something in our lives and we need to tell each student if they're faced with a situation, we have to, I have to encourage them and uplift them so that they feel great and um, safe in the long run. Thank you. To Gabrielle. As far as them wanting to meet with the board themselves, my reaction would be to remain calm and not make a big deal out of it so they would feel comfortable with expressing what they want and what they need. I would then let them know of the opportunities to do so and speak to the board. So when the opportunity arises, they'll be able to. And then I'll give them the information they need to do so. If they are unable to meet with the board themselves within a, within a timely fashion, I'll take note of what they want to happen and then bring it to the board for negotiation. And so everyone can hear it out. Thank you. To Jordan. Um, I believe that if the student want directly to talk to the board, I will encourage it. As a mob, we are the student's biggest cheerleader, their biggest representative. So if a student wants to go out and speak directly to themselves, I would encourage them to do so, provide them with the necessary information in order to do it correctly, as well as be there for support for questions, information, or anything concerning their matter. Thank you. To Michelle? I would highly encourage them to do so, and I would help them any way I can, obviously, because there's nothing better than talking about issues than it, it coming straight from the source of concern. And I can't say it better than the actual person telling me, I'm just, you know, restating it in my own words. Thank you for, for Shreya. Um, there's some issues that I believe just come better from a student's, another student's mouth rather than mine because they have experiences and they have a point of view that I don't hold. So I would obviously um, encourage the student to talk to the board about whatever issue they're, they want to talk about and I would give them the resources they can reach out and contact them with. Thank you for Vernon. I would 100% support that. Um, as a SMOB, it's my job to represent elementary, middle, and high school students and be their biggest cheerleader. I believe that um, when students use their voice, they really make a difference. 
And right now we're looking at a lot of students who are very disengaged with leadership and disengaged with the people making the decisions for them, and I would 100% encourage them to come to the board with their concerns. Thank you. For um, Moya. So I would highly encourage this. I would support them to do this, and I will be right by their side, providing them with information to relay their concern in a way where the board can understand. And if they are not able to speak with the board for a reason, then I will step in as the student mer member of the board and represent them. But it is great that if students have passion to give their issues directly, that would be, I would highly encourage that. Thank you. For Amira. So if a student genuinely has a concern that they want to express to the board, I will 100% be behind that. I think they have every right to express their voice, just like any other small or any student, they have a right and an equal voice, no matter what position they hold. So what I would do would, I would like tell them the dates of the board meetings, have them come if they really want to express their voice and talk to the board themselves, that'll be a perfect outlet to do so. Thank you. And Danae. Um, yes, I would very, like I would be very willingly to support the student who has the concern, but I would also wanna have a talk with them just to make sure that that's something that they really wanna do and that they're in the right mindset to do so because doing that could be a bit scary for them depending on what grade they're in. And also I feel like I would bring the, the um, I guess like, response to the board just to let them know that a student has a concern and then we can find ways to get the student to actually voice their thank you to every one of you guys you guys are doing great all those responses were amazing so we're going to move on to our next question and michelle you will be taking the next question first so as a student you can see many of your peers struggling with life, which can affect their mental health and performance within the classroom. How do you plan to incorporate mental health for students who struggle? Um, seeing as like practices from Google to help their workers and employees, they have like a break room or a designated area where they can do their work and just have you know a chance to breathe and think about stuff, do their own work, work at their own pace. With the, not the distractions and pressures of being in a classroom, potentially. And I will try to have that in every school, at least a designated area, whether it's in their library, a room outside of the school, anything, so they don't feel pressured and overwhelmed by anything that could be in their life at the moment. Thank you. On to Kyla. You know, I actually do relate to this question a lot because, you know, we've all been going through it, especially because of COVID. Our mental health has gone up. Anxiety has increased. Basically, just we haven't all been ourselves. And there have been a lot of students at my school who deal with a lot of mental health issues. It it all starts at home. And you never know what um, a kid or a child is going through. So what I would really do was, first I would do is I would be their friend. I would be understanding, I would have an open heart. I would listen to what they are. I would comfort them, um, come to like a reasonable um, agreement with them and basically just give them like an hour or some time like like um, to the side or like give them a pass if they feel, you know, like just um, under the weather and just let them just breathe, loose off for a little bit and to just to get back to being- 10 seconds remaining. Thank you. <laughs> For Jordan. Um, so for schools, I definitely would like to implement mental health days um, per quarter, about four or five every quarter for students. Schools shouldn't feel like a hassle for students dealing with outside pressures and stress from family to school to anything else they're dealing with. Along with mental health days being an excusable absence for students, I want to implement safe spaces for those who might be homeless or have troubled households in school so they feel safe and welcomed in their school building, as well as establishing mentorship programs for those who need help or need someone to talk to or reach out to during the school day, as well as increasing the amount of school psychologists that we have available to our students. There's no reason why a student in need should have to deal with not having a psychologist there 
half the week. So every school needs at least one or two psychologists available for them and their students. Thank you. For Gabrielle. I noticed how many students of these, how many students have these mental health issues, and I can relate to some degree. It can be hard for students to take care of their own mental health while struggling to keep their absences below the requirements in order to be able to still pass the school year without being punished. I would, I would implement mental health days and in-school personal learning spaces where students can learn outside of the classroom and alone if they prefer to. Thank you. For Elizabeth. The pandemic has um, affected a lot of students' mental health. And I plan to incorporate mental health for students who struggle with the situation. It, I will um, set up a wellness care plan for the students who are struggling and also for them to voice their situations, what's going on, whether it's in their own lives. They don't have to say what's in their homes, but like in their own lives, you know, and I can encourage them, say um, words that will uplift them. And um, if they're in their down times, um, I'll make sure and say, okay, well, there are better days ahead and you have to be positive all the time. So I will start off by um, starting a well, um, a well care, um, a well care program um, and to help the students with their mental health. Thank you. For David. I believe that mental health is extremely important, especially in Charles County, probably the most important thing for students from what I view and in my perspective. I would get into contact with local counselors and therapists and let these students know that it's okay to get help as, as someone who has <clears throat> struggled with anxiety in the past and really shut down and students in this area specifically, they feel as if they can't rely on their, their leadership, so they rely on their friend groups, which causes them to shut down and maybe not open up. But with the use of their uh, therapists and counselors, letting them know it's okay to open up, it'll become more comfortable environment for them. Thank you. For Danae. Um, I feel that incorporating some time in all the classrooms where we can just debrief and take time as a class to talk about any issues that we have or just take a break from learning as a whole just so that we can regroup together and if there's kids who are struggling that they can also have different outlets whether that's going to the counselor's office a, a psychologist that we have available or going to a safe space that they can feel comfortable to do their work at or just talk with someone and I feel also incorporating like different clubs or social groups for students. They can chat online since social media is a big part of our everyday life. They can chat online and keep each other, like hold each other accountable to where they check in and do what they need to do. Thank you so much. To Amira. So for me, when it comes to mental health, a big thing would be educating the staff educating the staff on what the symptoms of certain mental health issues would be is a big thing, especially since we can link mental illness with the decline in grades and academics. And I realize a lot of kids who are struggling mentally, they're getting put down and their, their teachers are getting mad at them because they're doing so bad in school and they're not understanding what these kids are going through. So educating the staff, having them be more sympathetic and getting these kids the help that they need instead of having them be judged and feel bad about themselves, I think that's what we need to do. Thank you. For Amoya. So one of the things I believe is implementing a time similar to North Point's Nest, where there is a one hour every day where students can take a time to socialize, even start clubs that can be geared towards mental health, or even get the academic help they need if they need tutoring, or if they just want to mitigate stress by doing work, getting their workload down. And also telling teachers, educating them more on mental health and how to address it with students who are struggling to get work done. Because I firmly believe that if your mental health is addressed and mitigated as much as possible, then your academics will follow suit. Thank you. For Vernon. First, I want to say that mental health is such an important thing amongst youth today. We have so many students juggling excessive workloads, college pressures, 
uh, home issues and things like that. I believe in being proactive um, rather than reactive and prioritizing student mental health, uh, limiting the amount of tests and assignments that can be given at a time. There's no reason why you should be getting 15 tests in chemistry and then 10 for math, the three from language arts. Um, I definitely believe in implementing wellness Wednesdays, which are a thing across the country, um, and again, facilitating comprehensive education around mental health and health curriculums. Thank you. And Shreya. I believe that to even begin to address mental health issues, it's important to detect where they start and to even be able to detect it at all. So I believe that teachers should receive training courses or education on um, symptoms or signs of mental health so they can detect it themselves. And we can educate teachers on how they can help and what they can do to reach out to their students. Because another thing that's important is to break the stigma around mental health. It obviously has a negative stigma, but it needs to be talked about more. And the students need to be encouraged to talk to each other and speak up about their issues. Thank you. And I do believe after Danae dropped out, David went first. So instead of you going first this time, Danae, you'll be going first this time to take the first question. So Danae, for you, do you have any plans to address bullying prevention? Um, yes, I feel like cyberbullying is a big like that's evolved more since social media has grown. And a lot of students, they spend a lot of their time on social media, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. So I feel like implementing steps or, or clubs where we can come together and talk about ways to prevent it, whether it's um, having social groups or talking about it in class specifically or like over the announcements just to get kids thinking about ways that they can be safe on the internet or safe with each other. Thank you. Now on to David. I believe that social media is a big part of bullying, especially in today's school society. I suppose it's it's a very powerful tool that can be used to make friends, it can be used to connect with teachers, with students. It's such a powerful and amazing tool, but it can also be used as an extremely dangerous weapon and it can be used to bully someone and you know you can feel the protection bullies feel the protection of an anonymous screen not being able to face the consequences of saying or leaving a mean comment but i i suppose they don't realize the the tremendous effects that it has on on a student or a person when they leave such negative comments so we need to utilize social media in the way that it's supposed to be used to uplift others and and help others and connect with each other thank you elizabeth so bullying is very, very um, bad, especially in our school societies. And yes, I do um, want to address a bullying um, prevention because bullying needs to be prevented. So, so social media is one way that lots of students are bullying one another. And I think for me as a student member of the board, I should address bullying prevention because no one wants to be bullied and no one wants to be harassed. No one wants to feel hurt. And that's how I feel. Thank you. On to Gabrielle. Bullying has been a problem for a long, long time and it's time for it to be fixed. Giving students a way to, an, to anonymously tell staff about their issues from bullying might give the students more confidence more confidence in having their problems addressed. Forming groups for students to make new friends could counteract these problems. And another way that it could be fixed slightly would be to go directly to the source of who's bullying them, well, directly to the bully, to their parents if necessary, and figuring out the problem and exactly the root of the cause of why this is going on. Thank you. For Jordan? With bullying, one of the biggest things is the social in awareness and insensitivity of our students that are being inflicted upon others. So I will um, try to implement forces and groups that can um, improve our community and our school system as a whole, because we are all one, a big um, family, a big school community. So I'll try to involve our community. Um, 
more school and student engagement in order to address why students may be bullying. It could be outside factors, it could be mental health issues. We need to address the bully, not only the victim, but both parties as well. We'll also have forums and tip lines to say, hey, I'm feeling bullied, social media wise, physically, or just in person, just something to get out and reach out to students. For Kyla. You know, there's always a reason as to why a bully bullies someone. So I would first go to the, to the aggressor. I would, the reason why they're bullying that person is because they see something in, in that person that they wish that they could see in, in themselves and they don't like it and they want to take their sunshine away. So what I would really do would, I would basically go to both parties, see what their history is with each other see the why as to why they are bullying that person and then and then um, come to an agreement, um, make awareness on social media about bullying and what the dangers of it is, um, and just come to an, an agreement with both other parties to make a decision. Thank you. For Michelle? I would create a safe space for all students across the county like on discord or whatever where they keep their own personal identity you know anonymous but have like a link or something so they can all be people that are around us so it's all a safe space so you know no outsiders so it feels like everybody's comfortable you know in the environment where they can we can promote you know anti-bullying slogans short videos on social media across on different pages and I mean, different media outlets and also by restrict, you know, having more stricter consequences against anyone that, you know, bullies anyone or harasses anyone within the school building or to, and any in negative interactions or bullying harassments between any two students involved in, or that attends a CCPS student, a, CC, a CCPS school. Thank you. For Sharia? Um. I believe that to address bullying, we first need to make clear rules against bullying and make it extremely clear what's not allowed. And also, I think that we need to create surveys and assessments so that we can understand how students are getting bullied. And um, with that data, we can collect it and determine a clear way to prevent it. And we also need a solid reporting system that everyone knows about so they can report something if they want to. And it needs to be anonymous because I know that there is a stigma around being bullied and it's embarrassing for some students. So it being anonymous would help. And finally, I think that we need to ensure protection for students who are being bullied or at least some system, like a system where they don't have to interact with the kids who are bullying them. Thank you. Now for Vernon. I think bullying is definitely a detriment to students' mental health and uh, to prevent it or even to just um, um, condense it. I think it's important to focus on the social environment of our schools. I think to assess bullying in our schools, we need to have data reports and data um, findings to be able to assess and track um, the flow of this. I think we need to garner staff and parent support for it. I think we should also um, create prevention groups across our county. Thank you. For so I believe oh, my apologies. <laughs> so I believe we should implement an appointment system where there are more efficient so people remain anonymous when reporting bullying. And then also once the two have been the bully and then the victim have been identified, some kind of interaction with the psychologist where the psychologist can talk to them and see where the root of the issue is because the bully clearly is not doing well mentally, perhaps that's why they're projecting onto their victim. So having a psychologist involved, I think would be beneficial, beneficial for both of them rather than just straight up suspending them. And if it's so severe, the ability for counselors to be able to separate them in their classes, if that is an issue, should also be there. Thank you. For Amira? So when it comes to bullying, I first believe we should highly encourage the students being bullied to speak out against speak up for themselves and speak out against being bullied because that's not acceptable. And I'm, a lot of students, they choose not to speak up for themselves because they're afraid of the consequences. But I'm pretty sure their circumstances would be much better if they just allowed themselves to not be walked all over. 
And then on top of that, when it comes to the student being bullied, well, bullying is not acceptable whatsoever. I believe they shouldn't be met with hostility and severe punishments for their actions. I think they should be met with a little bit of compassion and trying to figure out why they're bullying this person and understand if there's anything going, going on with them and try to help them and talk it through. So that's what I would do. Thank you all for your amazing responses once again. I can say with full confidence, this is, a, this is a very impressive group of city candidates. So we are kind of winding down for the night. So we have one more question to give you guys. And Kyla, you'll be taking the last and final question of the night first. So what do you think sets you apart from the other candidates? Well, before I say why, I was going to say like I have great um, competition because everybody here is amazing. But um, what I would really say what sets me apart from other candidates is that I'm not afraid to speak up for other people. You know, like I said before, from the front door is shut, I go through the back. And I make sure that things are in order for the school because a school doesn't make a school um, without everyone being happy. And going to school should be just like another place where you can be yourself. So if I can be that voice for students to make the atmosphere a better place, then I can say that I've done good as being a part of the SMA. Thank you. For Jordan? I believe that um, I see a very unique perspective for school. A lot of people have this thing that school might only be helpful to the smart kids or those who exceed, excel academically. But I like to see the perspective and view from everybody, from the homeless student who relies on school to serve him his meals and serve as the safe space, to a student who has outside pressures and dealing with raising their siblings while their parents are off at work, to those who are struggling, taking their eight, seven AP classes in their workload, I believe that I can see in interactors' perspectives of every student in our um, school community, not just the one size fits all, and trying to establish an equitable education for everyone. Thank you. For Gabrielle. What sets me apart from the other candidates is that I am fully able to bring controversial issues to the table that students have, regardless if other, if other people, particularly maybe like staff and parents and such, may not agree with, but may be able to have an easier time understanding if they have someone to explain it to them better and with more things supporting them, supporting their issue, supporting the what's it called solution. I can think of all ways to deal of all the different ways we can de deal with situations in schools and that and problems that so many students have here. And I just say that all of you are such great competition, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing all of you perhaps in the future. Perfect. On to Elizabeth. So what sets me apart from other candidates is that I am a very compassionate person when it comes towards people's problems and um, situations and even what is what they're going through in their own lives. And I always breathe a prayer for um, every student when they voice their concerns to me. I would always give them encouraging words and also um, empathize with them um even though I, I may not always go what they're going through i will always go a mile on their shoes and understand what they're going through thank you to david before i state my answer to this question i just want to say that each one of my fellow nominees is incredibly brilliant and i believe that each of them would be so successful in this position i have no doubt about that but what sets me apart is i have no i have so much fight in me, I have no quit. You know, no matter how many times I'm knocked down, no matter how many times I'm rejected or denied, I will keep fighting no matter what, I will get back up and I'll keep swinging, I'll do my best. And I can and will make the impossible, the seemingly impossible a reality. Thank you. For Danae. Um, what sets me apart from the other candidates is that I'm understanding yet driven. I feel like I will do my best to make sure that all the concerns that students have, that they're addressed. But if 
we can't get them addressed the way that students may particularly want them addressed, that we can come up with a solution to where everyone is somewhat satisfied because in the end, not everyone's going to be satisfied on every decision that's made. But if we can all be content with it, then I feel like that's good. All right, on to Amira. So I think what sets me apart from other candidates is that I am a person of my word. I will not say anything or claim to do anything that I do not believe can be done. And whatever I claim I want to do, I will put my 100% effort into making sure it gets done. Thank you. One moment, please. Oh, on to Moya. My apologies. So before I start, I just want to say you are all such amazing nominees. I, it would be an, it was an honor to be sitting with you guys and discussing today. I think one of my strengths is I am very understanding and I'm understanding of all perspectives so I can find a common ground between students and staff because the education system is not only students, it is also teachers and I want everyone to be satisfied. So that is definitely and I'm also very open to hearing students input and even if I haven't seen that perspective before. I'm very open to learning about new perspectives and incorporating them into potential solutions. And I'm also very open and honest. I, um, if I believe that something might not be done, then I will let you know straightforward, but I will also try to help you find a common middle ground for it. Thank you. For Vernon? I believe what sets me apart is my firm belief in equity and educational opportunity. Um, Upon being elected, I do understand the power of my vote, and I will not be scared to bring controversial topics to the board to discuss whether they can get my vote or not. I actually want to get in their vote. Thank you. For Shreya? Um, I just want to start off by saying that I think everyone else here is qualified, but I'm personally, my dad, he's in the Navy, so I'm a military brat, and I think that sets me apart from other candidates because I have the experience of living in, well, I've lived in four different states and I've lived in Japan. So I have experiences from all these different school counties and different groups of students that I think I could use to help better the Charles County um, school system. Thank you. And to Michelle. What sets me apart from other candidates is that I'm very social and I know how to adapt to different environments and communities. Um, from all the different clubs and associations I've been a part of and have spoken to from different counties because I have lived across all, all across Maryland and I had visited other states before for different meetings and just, you know, to, you know, go on vacation and et cetera. And I believe that helps me see different perspectives from different people because people that are in multimedia or in um, engineering wouldn't it be like the same people like probably be seen from National Honor Society, student SGA, uh, mock trial, like you don't normally see people from all those different things and entrepreneurial status people all together combined in one space. And I will be glad to be that middle ground person who has done all these things and more. You guys never failed to impress me. Your responses were very informative and the love you guys have for one another is just being respectful. Great, 10 out of 10 job. And I am so sad to say, this will conclude our candidate town hall for the night. Thank you all, thank you all, um, to our candidates for spending the night with us and putting your name forward to serve all 27,000. Give me one moment, please. Thank you all for serving all 27,000 students within Charles County. Before we move on to finish out the town hall, we're gonna give you guys each 60 seconds to kind of give some closing remarks and statements. So let me get my order. This is gonna be your moment to kind of just give any extra comment, anything you wanted to say, you didn't get a chance to, and put that out there for all the students to know you just a little bit more. Starting off with Vernon. Hey everyone, again, my name is Vernon. Over, and I'm currently running for small student member on Charles County Board of Education. I spent the last six years networking, leading, advocating, and tutoring 
behind the scenes, and here's my plan for you. Reform an invasive dress code policy, streamlining the process of creating and piloting new courses, assessing the layout of our school buildings to be more accessible for our disabled and neurodivergent students, facilitating comprehensive education around mental health for students in elementary, middle, and high schools, pushing officials to incorporate sexual assault education into our health curriculums, expanding accessibility to leadership opportunities across the county, and creating the dual enrollment program through virtual academics. The challenges and adversity we face are steep. However, if we unite as one student voice around our common ideals, we can work to move this county forward. I'm asking for your votes. We can get this done as one. Lovely. On to Sharia. So one of the main things that I want to address as a potential student member of the board is accessibility in Charles County because I think that ableism is a blaring issue that students aren't educated on, the board isn't educated on, and we're not providing the students who need resources. They um and I think that the Charles County public school system can do better with acknowledging accessibility and providing the resources that students need. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And for Michelle. Um, I would like to say that my other objectives, if I were to get it, I would bring up issues of bringing compost bins and recycling cans to every school in Charles County. So I do see there's a severe lack in that, especially in Charles County and at St. Charles. And more inclusive lunch and introduction of the My Plate, where they talk about grains, proteins, vegetables, all were, you know, given to you already, unless you don't want it. So we, you know, we stay away from wasting food and having the compost bins to put it there instead of having this very large, you know, amounts of waste and you know that are in the trash and the landfills. Along as bringing activity buses, I believe we do have share of support from that um, because we shouldn't have people, you know, being left out of activities because they don't have a ride home or safe transportation and having to pay like $23 for an Uber ride for one day. Um, Seconds remaining. Also, before and after care, I believe there's also a similar service to this already in the county. But. Amazing. On to Kyla. Before I would. Um, before I say my reasonings and extra stuff about me, I just have to say that I have great um, a competition so far. Like, all of you guys are amazing. Um, but if you elect me as your next um, a student member of the board, I will not quit. Like, I'm not a quitter. I Once I see a problem, I will stick to it until it is resolved any kind of way I can. And, um, you know, being in SGA for the past year, since I wasn't able to ninth or 10th grade, I got to see what government and how it um, all goes. And I actually fell in love with it. And if I can be a person who can be a voice for people who are probably shy or don't want to, then I can say that I made a difference in my community when I come, up, come back to it in like um, 10 years. So thank you. Thank you. On to Jordan. If elected as our next county swab, I would like to facilitate a safe and equitable education system for all of our students, from our BIPOC community to our LGBT community, our neurodivergent and our disabled community. Having the school system and our community represent you and have your voice heard and be known is my biggest thing. I want to increase student um, involvement in their curriculum, having classes that we would like to keep and like to learn about be present, um, menstrual pads in every bathroom for every student, female identifying or those who have to deal with menstrual issues every month to decrease the stigma against periods, as well as just having our student voice heard and implemented in the community. Thank you. On to Gabrielle. The position of the student member of board is an honor for anyone to hold, uh, and I would love to be your student member of the board. I'll push the goals of mental health improvements in our systems, fixing our dress codes, and helping to target all students with different learning styles and make sure they don't fall through the cracks. Student member of the board is a big responsibility and I would appreciate and be more than willing to take, take it. Again, I'm Gabrielle Wimbush and, and hope you vote for me as your student member of the board. Thank you. On to Elizabeth. 
Hello, my name is Elizabeth Holmes. I'm a 10th grader at St. Charles High School, and I would love to be your next student member of the board. I think ramping up incentives for good conduct using the MTSS slash RIT program would be the most effective in addressing some of the issues. For example, dress code violations, tardiness, cell phone usage, and fighting. I also believe that students' voices must be heard, and I will also voice their opinions to them so that um, both both opinions can be fair, and also um, hear, hear students' voices and also make changes in the way we live in our school society. Again, my name is Elizabeth Holmes, and please vote for me as your next student member of the board. Thank you, and have an awesome night. Amazing. On to David. My name is David Yum. I'm currently a sophomore attending Westlake High School, and I would like to be your next student member of the board. And for these reasons, I know what it's like to hit rock bottom. I've, I've been there. And while it may be difficult, I can help you lay out the foundation for how I found the ladder to climb out and figure out your road to success. That is my job. That is my objective. I will fight for everyone. Fighting for everyone, regardless of race, gender, religion, I will fight for you. My name is David Young, and please elect me to be your next student member of the board. Thank you. And for Danae. Hello, everyone. My name is Danae Hudson. I'm currently a junior at North Point High School. And some of my main goals that I would like to target if I can become your next student member of the board are workload, mental health, and um, workload and mental health. I feel like the workload that students have takes a big toll on your mental health. So those two tie hand in hand together because a lot of students are involved in extracurricular activities or they have to take care of more than one sibling when they get home or they just don't have the resources at home to do their schoolwork. So I feel like incorporating different clubs and activities to target these issues will be a very good goal to reach for the students in all of those kind of Perfect. On to Amira. Okay, so for me, I mainly want to combat student underrepresentation. I believe the majority of issues seen within our school system can be directly attributed to the underrepresentation of students. Because students do not have outlets to properly express their voice, we don't allow students to have direct control over their own education. And this allows room for policies that don't agree with student opinions. So I want to be the direct voice for students to express their opinions. So vote me, Amira Bujma, for the next student member of the board. And Amoya. So some of the main goals I want to focus on is, as a student member of the board potentially, is I want to focus on mental health prioritization within schools and giving students the ability to try and alleviate stress and deal with their mental health struggles within school since I know it's hard to access that outside of school. I also want to open up some fundraisers to help fund like menstrual, uh, menstrual equipment in the bathrooms for women. And also I want to work on the dress code since I know a lot of students express distaste on that. So those are some of the core issues I would like to address as potential student member of the board. So my name is Amoya Kula, and I highly encourage you guys to please vote for me. Thank you all for tonight. You guys did amazing. And before we wrap up and close, just two reminders. Um, the candidates will be also doing five additional more questions submitted by students. They'll be answering this in written form. All these written form responses will be available on the SharePoint site with all the candidate speeches. So if your, answer, if your question wasn't answered tonight, it could be one of the five chosen on the SharePoint. And before, the close, before we close the night off, there's just one more additional reminder to all students, sixth grade through 12th grade, that you will be sent a link to vote via Synergy email for one of the, 12, um, one of the 11 candidates to move on to the general election. Voting will open on the 28th and it will close at 11.59 on April 1st. Remember those dates. Thank you, thank you guys so much for coming here tonight. Following the primary election, two of your top candidates from this election will move on to the general election, which will take place in May. Following that election, our 28th student member of the Board of Education for Charles County will be elected. Thank you, everyone. And you guys have a great, amazing night. Great job. And thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great and safe night.